You had mentioned you had some questions on 10.5, so I'm going to review some vocabulary from 10.4 and move into 10.5 to see if that can kind of help you before you can get help from a, um, a math teacher at your school. First of all, this unit starts talking about an inscribed angle, and it's important to understand the inscribed angle. In the beginning of this unit, you had an angle that was at the center of the circle. That's called a central angle because it's at the center of the circle. With the central angle, whatever the degree of the angle is, that's the degree of the arc. The arc just goes to the opening of where the angle opens to. That's the degree of the arc. With that, now we have something called an inscribed angle. An inscribed angle comes all the way across to the other side. With that, a different property holds true. Circles have 25 theorems, you have to know. It's crazy. That's why I said to get the theorem help sheet, print it, use it, and help you while you're doing your homework and stuff. The inscribed angle says this angle right here, inscribed, it matches this out here, but now the relationship is two times that angle. So my arc is two times what my central angle is. So if my, if my arc is four, my inscribed angle is two. If my angle is three, my, my outside is going to be six. So that's the relationship they have. The theorem actually says the measure of the angle, which they're talking about that right there, that's the measure of the angle, is one half of the measure of the arc. I just put arc instead of the, what the arc is, which is the same thing as saying if you're going in, it's half. If you're going out, it's double. So, so my kids kind of understand the doubling it going out. Well, think about it. It's twice as wide as it was with the central angle in the other picture because now you pushed back the angle. It's got to be a bigger opening, so now it's got to be two times it. It's the same relationship as the theorem. It's just a little bit easier to understand because if we just think about it, if he's six, then he's got to be three. He's half of them, okay? Which is what the theorem says here, but that's the relationship as well. That's the first thing. I'm not sure which section it is in, but that's an important bit of information. Then the next theorem says, okay, with these inscribed angles, a couple things happen. All right, so with our inscribed angles, we, have, we can have this picture that looks like this right here. It's not a very good picture, but sorry. It's saying that I have this angle here, and I have this angle here. That these two angles have to be congruent. Why? Because right here they open up to this arc right here, BC. Because BC, whatever BC is, the arc opening is the same, so therefore they have to be congruent. So angle ABC, not ABC, sorry, that was written backwards. Shame on me. So angle BAC is congruent to angle BDC. Because they have the same arc opening, they have to have the same angle measure because they open to the same spot right here, and that distance isn't going to change. Now, with that as well, because they're both inscribed angles, it holds that same property. If he's x, he's x, and he's 2x. It's the same property as the inscribed angles, because it's just two inscribed angles that open to the same place. If they open to the same place, well, they've got to have the same degree. That's all it's saying. Then we talk, and that was theorem, if you wanted to make a reference, that's theorem 10.8. And this was theorem 10.7, if it matters. I don't know if it really matters the theorem numbers. It matters what, you, what they're doing. The next theorem then says 10.9, says, okay, now I have a circle, and I have trapped inside of this circle a, a, an angle, a triangle. It's saying, hey, if this triangle goes through the center of my circle so that 
AB is a diameter of my circle, which means it cuts through the center, then it says, hey, this triangle has to be a right triangle. That's all it's saying. So it's saying that this triangle, ABC, has to be a right angle, with C being my vertex, or my, you know, my, where, um, sorry, where C is the, ver the, I say the vertex angle, but that's not right, um, with A being the right angle, and so now, if I, had, if I had to find a measurement, I could use Pythagorean theorem from unit 7, because now AB has to be my hypotenuse, and then AC and BC would be my legs, so if I had to find a missing side or something of this triangle, then I could use my Pythagorean theorem. Because anytime you have a right triangle. So it just says that basically if AB is a diameter, then C has to be the right angle. If AB goes through the diameter, C has to be a right triangle. Okay? Then you move to the next little theorem. And then we get to the crazy ones that I think are actually the ones you're having trouble with. But 1010 says, okay, I have a triangle again. And inside this triangle, I've got a quadrilateral trapped. And all the vertices all hit the sides of the triangle. It's hard with a um, stylus to do that. And it's just saying basically, hey, that here I have this nice little quadrilateral now trapped inside of this circle. It says that in here, the opposite angles are supplementary. It's different from your regular parallelogram and all that mess. Here it's saying that my opposite angles, these are my opposite angles, that angle B and angle D are supplementary, which means if they're supplementary, what is that? They equal how many degrees? Right, 180 degrees. Sorry, my the handwriting on a stylus is horrible, and I apologize. That means I have 180 degrees sitting with those two angles. By the same token, A and C are opposite angles, so we know that... Angle A and angle C are supplementary as well, which then equals 180 degrees. And with that as well, every, any quadrilateral you know is 360 degrees based on unit 8. So that's all that that theorem says. Instead of them being like opposite and congruent like you learned earlier, because he's trapped in a circle, they're supplementary. Because you'll be given angle A is... 100 degrees, what's angle C? Well, angle C would be 80 because they're supplementary. Now it gets to these wacky theorems, which is probably what was giving you a little bit of grief. We're going to talk about theorem 10.11, which these next ones all have the same type of idea. They all just look different. And that's the next three we're going to do. With the next three on 10.11, it says I have a circle. I have a tangent to my circle, and then I have this chord. With that, it says I have angle 1 and I have angle 2. And it says, how do we find the measure of angle 1, and how am I going to find the measure of angle 2? Let me just put some little uh, things right here, little points. So what it tells me is the measure of angle 1. Well, the measure of angle 1 is this blue right here. Okay, that's angle 1. That's the measure of angle 1. The measure of angle 1 is going to be 1 half, it's still that 1 half thing, of arc AB. It has that same property, and arc AB goes from here to here. It's the same property as we have with the inscribed circle. It all kind of goes back to that same property. So this blue right here, that angle, has the same measure as its half of this. So if AB, in this case, is 6, then he's 3. It also says if you're trying to find angle 2, which is now going to be the red right here. He's got the same thing. He's going to be half of the arc BCA, because he's going to be the, he's going to be the ma uh, major arc. So he's half the arc going this way. So again, if he's 10, then my measure of angle 2 is half of him, which is 5. So that's the first theorem. Always think if it's going out to in, you're going to double it going out, you're going to half it coming in, and these happen to all these, okay? It's the same kind of idea for the same, for the properties. Then we get to the next one. Oh, sorry, that was theorem 10, yeah, theorem 10, 11. Then we get to theorem 12, 12. 
12, 12, 9, 10, 12 is a little bit different. Notice how on 10, 11, the tangent's on the outside of the circle, okay? On here, these next two are similar, but the difference is where they cross, okay? So here, I'm going to have a circle. I'm going to have these two angles cross right here. I'm just going to put it in here. And it says, okay, I want to find the measure of angle 1. This is the measure of angle 1. It's my red right here. The measure of angle 1 equals... Now, because they cross on the inside, that's the kind of the way to memorize it, it makes like an X. You're going to add these two arc measures together. It's going to be, the, it's going to be a half because everything's a half. It's going to be half of this arc right here. So let me move this piece over right here for a second. Sorry. i just move that over. It's going to be half arc CD plus the other side, arc AB. And think about it, it crosses in the middle, it makes like a plus sign. So this measure right here, who's red, that's my one, that was the one I had written there, he is going to be half of CD plus AB. So let's just say CD is 5 and AB is 10, just say, then the measure of angle 1 is going to be 1 half of 5 plus 10, half of 15, which I believe is 7.5. And that would be a degree. It's, I know it's little, but that's, you know, that's just because I'm playing with numbers. Same idea if you're trying to find the measure of angle 2. I'm just going to roll this up a little bit. To find the measure of angle 2, which is the blue dot right there, the measure of angle 2 does the same thing, but it uses the two he's across from. So he's still one half, but he's going to be arc BD plus arc AC. So it's the same property, but it's wherever the, the angle sits, pushed to the side, it's going to be half of those two things added together. And if you think about it, there's a, it makes a plus sign kind of in the middle, a squashy one, but it makes a plus sign. So it's half of those two things added together. So how does he differ from 10, 13? 10, 13 gets the craziness. Um, the craziness says, okay, on 10, 12, he crosses on the inside, so I'm going to add. On 10, 13 says, and there's a lot of different ways I know they said in the notes to do it, but on 10, 30, it crosses on the outside, you're basically going to subtract. Same type of theorem, but now I'm going to subtract. I have this circle, and then I have either... Either I have, and it's the same for all three of these, either I have two tangents, or I have a tangent and a secant, or I think that was it, or I have two secants, right, or I have two secants. So it looks any of these three ways. But the deal is that the angle I'm looking for is this end angle here each time. So here, what I always tell my kids is you're going to subtract, it's still a half, but now you're going to subtract this outer minus the inner. Outer minus the inner. Outer minus the inner. We're up in 10, 12. We added because they crossed on the inside. That's the difference. So let's draw a picture and let's just do a little example to show you that. So we'll start with the one right here that's got the two tangents on the outside. We'll call him A. We'll call him B. Um, and we'll call him angle 1. Okay, so to do this one here, if I'm trying to find the measure of angle 1, all I'm going to do is take the, and I'm going to put a little thing here just so it doesn't confuse you, I'm going to put a little C right there. I'm going to take 1 half, because he's the phrase that pays, a 1 half, arc ACB minus arc AB. So now let me put a little value in, I'm not using real numbers again. Let's just say that he's... I can't even think now. Hold on. Um, I gotta put numbers in real quick. Uh, I gotta find one with numbers. I have to look at one with numbers that I have on my thing. All right, so let's just say that he's, oh, golly jeepers, uh, 200. Because if he's 200, then he has to be 180. 
because that's equal 360, you know, because it's the soul outside of the circle. Oh, 360, so he's 160. Sorry, he's 160. So now, to find the measure of angle 1, it's just 1 half of the arc ABC, which is 200, minus arc AB 160. So I do the parentheses first, so it's half of 200 minus that is 40, so the measure of angle 1 is 20 degrees. That's the first one. And they all work the same way. They just look different. So remember, when your angle's on the outside, you're subtracting. So the next one that we had, we had the tangent and a secant. So here, let's just say I have um, 180, which is not that, but that's okay. And here, let's just say I have 60, because it's not going to matter for this one here. I'm looking for angle 1 again, way over there. So here, it's still the same theorem, the measure of angle 1. I'm going to make A, B, and throw a little C right there. Okay, so the measure of angle 1 is 1 half, because that's always 1 half. The arc ACB minus arc, well, that's going to be different here, sorry. That's going to have to be a D and an E, sorry, because he's not as big as the other one. So let me put that in there. So arc DE. So again... It's the outer minus the inner one half of it. So now the measure of angle one is one half of 180 minus 60. So the measure of angle one is one half of 120. Half of 120 is 60, so it's 60 degrees. And then the last one that we look at, because they all have the same property, they just look different, is when I have these two secants. So I'm going to call him A, yeah, B, sorry, I'm going to call him A, C, and D. And then now I'm going to say he's 170, he's 70, and we're looking for that angle 1 right here in the, in the little tiny bit again. Again, because angle 1's on the outside, I'm going to take 1 half and subtract outer minus inner. Chunk, outer minus inner. So the measure of angle 1 is 1 half of the arc. BD minus the arc AC. So the measure of angle 1 is 1 half of 170 minus 70. So it's 1 half of 100, so it's 50 degrees. I hope this little quick thing helped you. Um, if not, I know you said you're trying to get help of a teacher at Grafton. Um, I wish I could come over there and help you, but I, yeah, you don't have, you, you, you're there the same time I teach. I'm really hoping that this lesson um, is able to help you a little bit. Um, please let me know if you're still having trouble. I'll try to make even a simpler lesson or if you can pinpoint the exact area of the theorem that's weird, I will definitely try to help you the best I can. Thank you.